uh, Srikant, why don't you start with introducing yourself and, you know, how you got into this profession, what exactly you do? So actually, uh, I've prepared a presentation uh, for entire thing, and that includes my introduction as well as few of the pointers on that. Uh, so maybe I think I'll better start with the presentation. I've conducted many of such sessions uh, before, and I've also delivered a lot of trainings around how cybersecurity uh, is currently structured in the industry. Uh, and my general pattern is I start with cybersecurity jokes or memes. And so because as I promised, I wanted to make it a fun session rather than a regular one-to-one -one lecture or anything like that. So uh, please feel free to raise any questions. If you have in between, you can stop me. Or if you have any detailed question, you require additional information, you can then reach out to me later on as well. Okay, to start off with first meme or joke, I would say. So when we are looking into security, we try and make a lot of changes, make everything all possible way secure. But then some of the fundamentals are missed out. Like we implement all the controls, everything. And then we put it into wrong direction. So in this picture, you can see that the locks are uh, fitted on the door. A lot of things have been done. You, you have introduced passcode, biometric, a lot of things. But everything is on the other side. So what anybody can do is just unscrew the every, every uh, control which is there in the picture and get in. Right? Then the other one is... This is typical corporate meme that whenever you upgrade or update your privacy policy, it's sometimes so transparent or sometimes it is so baseless that it is not meeting the purpose for which it is introduced for. Okay. Then another typical example which you see in cybersecurity industry is, let's say you've been attacked, you have come to know that you've been attacked, uh, but it's too late. The attack has already happened maybe two, three months back and the data is already gone and then you are trying to remedy it. Another example is, yeah, we know about uh, every security control is in place and we have eyes and ears everywhere, but some of the servers are missed out and only those servers are compromised. All right, so this is uh, just to, you know, give an idea about what exactly happens in the cybersecurity world and how uh, these things basically uh, are our day-to-day -day examples to make people aware that why it is important to pay attention to these uh, things. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> I'll just go through the agenda. So we will be talking about some of the cybersecurity related concepts. It is very important to understand the basics of it. What exactly is cybersecurity all about, uh, what are the uh, key terms which are used in cybersecurity, why uh, these key terms matter, what are the basic requirements of knowledge and skills uh, within cybersecurity, and then we will jump on to the career paths, uh, what exactly you can do in cybersecurity, what are different paths, and again, these are not limited paths. Uh, I've tried to consolidate all areas as uh, precisely as possible, but yeah, there are wider areas and uh, as technology is evol evolving, every time there are new things which are coming up. So you can definitely have some of the other opportunity apart from the slide which I'm going to present. So uh, quickly about me, um, I've been working in cybersecurity for about 12 years, uh, was part of uh, a consulting firm earlier, now part of uh, aviation industry. And I've had my previous experience in hiring people. Uh, then I've uh, had uh, previous experience in training multiple uh, people. Uh, I've trained in uh, the banks. I've trained into government firms. So uh, I've, I, I come from training background. Like I have experience in training at multiple levels. Uh, then uh, I've conducted multiple uh, projects across the industry, uh, multiple industries and across international locations. Uh, so I've worked into BFSI sector, energy sector, shipping industries, aviation industries, and uh, mainly I've also in, uh, worked in software development uh, firms. Uh, and I've worked them there as consultant, sometimes as an auditor, uh, sometimes um, as a security reviewer. 
previously i used to do a lot of hands on and uh, uh, i used to do some bug bounty hunting uh, so uh, my name is there in oracle hall of fame uh, dodge telecom atnt where i have uh, responsibly reported some of the security bugs in their systems and they've uh, given me appreciation for it and they've added my name into their hall of fame uh, uh, quite uh, many years back i would say maybe around 7 or 8 years back i had published one uh, uh, article into a pentest magazine on how exactly sql injection is exploited till the root level so using that uh, particular vulnerability how can you own the entire uh, server and then the domain itself uh, yeah, so that's a bit of brief. I will not call myself as cyber security expert because it's very difficult to achieve that level. And uh, even the real experts who uh, are there in the industry, they also do, don't call themselves as experts. So I will call myself as cyber security enthusiast because every day I'm learning something new. And that's what I'm going to share uh, with you uh, from my experience that what exactly you need to do uh, uh, to make your career path in uh, cybersecurity and how you can do it. Right, so let's understand what is cybersecurity, okay? And uh, this is the uh, question which is asked by many people. And the reason why I thought of bringing that topic is because uh, initial years when I started my career in cybersecurity, a lot of people used to uh, get confused whether I'm working in uh, as a security guard uh, or I'm working as somewhere, you know, uh, being into physical security where I'm monitoring CCTVs or anything of that sort. I don't blame people for that because the word security means most of the times in the same sense. And if you look at from broader point of view, almost everything uh, which is part of security, be it physical security or information security, uh, OT security, cyber security, digital security, everything is pretty much based on the same core concepts. So we will be talking about those core concepts. So uh, I, I tried to figure out a way to explain things in very layman terms, uh, because many times I used to, uh, you know, get confused or maybe I would say I, I used to find it difficult to explain what I do to, let's say, somebody like my mother or maybe my grandmother, okay? And why that uh, becomes very difficult is because you cannot explain things to them in two core technical terms, all right? So that's where I came up with this example that let's say you uh, have a house, okay? Or maybe something, some property uh, somewhere. Now call that a house as an asset, okay? That's your property, you own something, you have control over that. And then to protect that, you put a control over it, you put a fencing or ring fencing around it, you put barbed wires or maybe uh, construct a wall around it to protect that asset or that property. Then uh, to have continuous monitoring, you put CCTV cameras, you uh, maybe put a security guard at the gate, uh, you put a number of controls just to make sure that nothing is going wrong and nobody is able to enter inside or uh, you know rob the property but you leave a back door just maybe for uh, getting the dudwala bhaiya inside from the uh, behind so that his his shop is closed or you want to uh, make it convenient so you leave a back door uh, in the entire security portion right and that's the back door which a thief is aware of okay so whenever any let's say any uh, uh, robbery happens or anything of that sort happens, there is a specific phase which is followed or a pattern which is followed. Any any person who is trying to damage your assets, damage your property, they'll basically try to uh, understand what all things you are keeping, let's say at your home or wherever you have your assets kept, okay? what security controls you have implemented or what all things you are trying to implement to protect those things, okay? And they will do some kind of reconnaissance, uh, understand the patterns, understand your in and out timings, understand the times when your gates are open, uh, try and find out what all other uh, ways to enter inside the premise, 
correct and obviously they will uh, identify any loopholes in the system so consider that the back door is uh, available and it is kept open for some reason or maybe somebody forgot to lock it uh, at, at the time when you are sleeping right and then the thief comes in and he tries to steal uh, or do uh, damage to your property okay so now if you map this example across our it uh, industry okay or information uh, systems industry i would say then consider home or your house as your data okay the information which you are trying to protect in your computer world and the controls which you might implement are like you know network level controls like firewalls and uh, uh, have uh, your monitoring systems in place okay and then if there are some vulnerabilities left uh, behind which may get exploited then that's something which are exploited by an attacker or a hacker all right and that's the thing which you are keeping as a risk in your system okay so definitions to look into assets is your data or the information or any computer system or your uh, network system any of it systems uh, you are having within your environment or within your organization is qualified as asset okay in wider terms even the organization's property or organization's physical assets are also considered as assets but here we are talking about information assets okay so assets is something which you own or something you have a control on all right then controls which you implement so controls definition is that whatever ring fencing controls which you implement in the uh, it world are uh, the controls which you have uh, to protect those assets right so to, for protecting any asset the controls which you implement are essentially the controls as in definition then the vulnerability is that if you are not uh, updating your controls or if you are keeping some level of uh, open door or anything which may cause uh, a threat actor to come in is a vulnerability okay so any loophole in the system any uh, misconfiguration in the system or any uh, security uh, level of uh, issue which is kept open in the system is essentially qualified as vulnerability okay then the risk is basically a probability of anybody exploiting that vulnerability so it is very simple a loophole and somebody uh, who's going to uh, use that loophole to damage your property is a risk so the uh, i am not going into the mathematical uh, formula for it but in very simple terms is the way you exploit it and the chances of that exploitation is considered as a risk okay then threat is the actual possibility of that risk coming into materialization okay when you are uh, performing that attack and the risk is materialized into a damage that is a threat which you are keeping a threat actor is nothing but somebody who's going to make that threat uh, into material sorry risk into materialization is a threat actor correct so in this example a thief would be a threat actor and lastly impact so what is going to happen after this exploitation is done and what level of damages you are going to face post exploitation right so it could be anything it could be property damage it could be monetary loss it could be reputational loss it could be your data loss in terms of uh, information systems did this example make my mother and my grandmother aware of what i'm doing i would say to a certain extent uh, at least they get an idea of uh, what uh... Uh, you are doing uh, basically protecting the house and ensuring that uh, thieves are not entering the house and taking off things. Yeah. So in this example, they still had questions. Okay, this we understood. But what do you do? Okay, exactly. What do you do? So in that sense, I uh, again give them an example. Now let's say if this loophole at that time I was having a role of pen testing. So I gave them an example that this particular area of loophole is unknown to a lot of people. Okay. Now my job is to find out those loopholes. 
Okay, so that's one area which I explained to them that, you know, this is something which I do at the moment. And I may evolve and I may uh, create some other skill sets uh, level so that I can handle other aspects also. So essentially, uh, any uh, cybersecurity role is pretty much revolving around these concepts. Okay, so finding out loophole is something which a pen tester or a security tester does. Okay, then uh, ring fencing, anything like how exactly that ring fencing has to happen. How do you protect the assets? How do you uh, ensure that the controls are in place? Is an architect, security architect or a security engineering team, they uh, perform that kind of task. They have that mindset of implementing required security controls in place to protect the asset. Okay. Then the CCTV monitoring or any type of monitoring or identifying any incident or anomaly, identifying any security event or alerting uh, respective teams, handling those kind of security breaches is essentially uh, a role of cybersecurity operations manage, uh, manager or operations center. Okay. So uh, security operations center is basically talking about that. Now, what are the standards and how these controls or these uh, systems are to be implemented is something related to a governance role. So the governance people, they'll try and ensure that whatever uh, systems we are implementing, they are up to a specific standard, which is recognized across the globe or which is followed by majority of the industries. Okay. And then simulation of the entire breach scenario is something is done by uh, likes of red teaming and all that exercises. Okay. So I, I essentially was able to convince them that I'm no longer a security guard, but I'm basically looking into cyber security, which talks about the information security concepts. Okay. So now, one question yeah. here, Shrikan, sorry, um, there, you, you spoke about vulnerability, right? So if you take the example of the house, so the loophole is basically a vulnerability, can be articulated that way? Yes. And uh, to give you a precise example, if the back door is kept open, okay, then that is a loophole. That is a vulnerability which you are keeping. Now, how long you have kept that back door open? Again, uh, has like, you know, sm small uh, uh, aspects when you are considering a vulnerability. So if your property is quite sensitive, you are keeping a lot of uh, maybe money or anything like that in the property, then you define like, you know, if the back door is open for more than an hour, then that's a major problem for me. Okay, if it is kept for half an hour, then somewhere moderate that within half an hour, nothing may happen. Okay, a person entering inside, stealing everything and going out may not happen within half an hour. So that sort of parameters are defined based on the severity. Okay, now it could be anything backdoor. I gave an example because typically in a house, those are the things which are uh, kept. Even a security guard not at his desk or uh, not at the uh, main gate or uh, leaving main gate uh, open for some time, then that is also another vulnerability. So it could be any loophole within the system uh, is considered as a vulnerability. Right, got it. So here we understood all the basic definitions within cybersecurity. And if you start your career in cybersecurity, mainly your uh, entire journey would be uh, revolving around these concepts. So make it really simplified to understand and uh, understand it in very uh, basic manner so that rest of the stuff will fall into place when you learn more about cybersecurity in your career path in future. Okay. Now let's look into the knowledge requirements. This is going to be a bit like academic understanding and what exactly is required for uh, getting into that career path of cybersecurity. So I intentionally added this slide so that everybody is aware of what they are learning in school and later on in colleges, uh, in your bachelor's and master's and why it is important to have those core fundamentals clarified, those knowledge base uh, clarified so that whenever you are working in any industry and within cybersecurity fields, these core concepts are challenged almost every day. So many times uh, students have this concept say, uh, okay, we are just studying right now so that we are getting our GPA higher, CGPA higher. 
or getting my grade up to first class or distinction level. But take it from this sense that whatever you are learning is going to get used when you are working in the industry. Okay, especially when it comes to cybersecurity, majority of the concepts are applied concepts. When you are learning core concepts of IT, those are applied in cybersecurity. So again, not to give you too many details around it and not to confuse anybody, but these are the core concepts of uh, knowledge with knowledge base which is required to build your career in cybersecurity. Anybody who's having network and network security knowledge needs to have in-depth knowledge about the protocols, services, ports, cryptography, uh, which is used in network and network security. And why it is important? Because the entire IT world and communication of IT assets revolve around network and network security. Okay, so it is very important to have basic fundamentals cleared about how the protocols work, how the network architecture is structured, what are the topologies, how ports work, how cryptography works, what are the encryption standards and all that. Again, not getting into two details because at this stage, I think the basic idea about the area is very important for everybody. And uh, when you uh, progress in your studies and your career path, you will eventually get along with these concepts. And at that time, don't miss out on these concepts. That's the message which I wanted to bring up. Then you will come across applications. It could be mobile, it could be web, it could be any other micro applications and all that. And uh, it is very essential to understand application architectures, how the APIs are structured, what are different frameworks of applications? Uh, what are the application security related concepts? How web techno uh, technologies work? And I will, uh, after my session, maybe over an email, I will pass on all the possible books which you can read about or study. And uh, I will also give a few of the industry experts uh, details. Uh, you can follow them on YouTube, Twitter, um, all the social media channels. Most of them are available on those channels so that you can understand in depth like what I'm talking about, what are these keywords uh, mean and how you can leverage the knowledge of uh, those experienced people to build your career in cybersecurity. Just one thing I wanted to uh, ask you is, uh, when you're talking about network and network security, so as part of my uh, curriculum, when I learn about network, network security probably is a topic that is covered, but they are two separate branches, right? So I can either just focus on network or I can focus on network security. Uh, yeah, so there are two branches to it. And when you are building your cybersecurity uh, skill sets, you need to have at least basics of network. Okay, so uh, I'm currently talking about only about the basics. Um, and when you uh, try and go into the security bit, then you need to know more uh, areas, okay, which I've covered in my next uh, section of this slide. Uh, about how next uh, levels are achieved and what additional knowledge you need to have when you are really going into the security bit of it. Okay. Okay, great. So Thanks. Here, yeah, here I'm talking about only the core concepts, which are like, you know, must. Uh, these are the concepts which you need to have uh, in any of the IT field anyway, right? Okay, uh, so talking about the systems, systems could be anything. It could be operating system, your database uh, management system, uh, any of the uh, different uh, VMs, cloud infrastructure, containers, which are currently uh, the latest technology which people are using to build applications. So knowledge on these systems is very important and how they function. So when you are understanding these systems or you are learning about all these concepts. Don't learn it from the point like, you know, what questions will come in your exam or in your interview or that sort. No. The crux of learning all these concepts or all these fundamentals is how these systems work in a logical sense. You need to understand in logical sense that uh, what is the paging concept in uh, any operating system? What are the protocols into the networking part? how OSI layer or how the communication happens. So how do you, uh, again, to give you a very basic example of understanding network protocols, okay, how do you understand that? 
so you are nowadays everybody is browsing web uh, websites all right google.com facebook.com etc so understand in this sense when you type facebook.com what happens okay when you click on go button on browser how that flow goes back into let's say resolving the ip address then getting into the uh, next layer of the protocol and then uh, getting the entire uh, communication flown on the physical channel all right so concepts like you know why there are bits and bytes uh, in the entire computer world why there are concepts of zero and one that is called as binary in computer world so if you understand these very common and core uh, concepts of computer world then you will understand everything slowly and in better way a computer or any it system is nothing but based on electronics correct and what electronics or any switch understands it only understands on or off okay so essentially zero and one is nothing but zero is off one is on consider that way understand the concept that way now whenever we are fitting any data into a size of byte or bits bits are generally zero or one okay that is on or off so you turn on a bit you turn off a bit and based on those eight bits we are basically forming a byte correct and that's the way the entire computer world is structured and that's the reason why it is 0 to 0 1 0 1 everywhere okay now when you are browsing a website on your computer you are seeing your regular human readable text and how does the electronic system uh, below the browser understands is something which you really need to uh, follow or uh, you know make your understanding through that path okay so from browser it goes into resolution of the ip address then uh, resolution of the physical address of uh, that particular asset and then the entire data is converted into a, a first uh, regular byte code then it gets converted into binary and then it flows over a physical channel of network and network is nothing but cables which are connected across the globe other wireless technologies are there i'm not denying that but typically the internet is nothing but a mesh of connected cables across the globe right so understand it from that point and then you will get that idea about how network works how network security works how uh, uh, internet works and then how applications are designed over uh, these basic networks right and similarly when you are understanding systems or operating systems you have to understand how the data on a computer is managed by an operating system when you type search or when you type any command what happens uh, behind your screen okay what happens inside the cpu what happens uh, inside the memory correct so when you think from that logic then you will understand the concepts easily and then if anybody asking any questions you will be able to answer so these are the key areas which anybody should have and uh, in next section i will talk about some of the advanced areas which you can explore later on okay but since you have you are just stepping into uh, information uh, uh, industry i would say uh, you need to have understanding and you need to learn these concepts very clearly now uh, so bit of uh, knowledge about security itself Uh, when i'm talking about the key areas uh, while building career in cyber security so in first three sections we spoke about core concepts of any information system all right now we are talking about the security systems like why firewalls are required what are the attack life cycles in any cyber attack uh, what are the ports and how do you scan ports uh, so some of the tools are available in uh, the industry which are quite popular and you can use those again i will give you reference links for those tools so using those tools you can identify what are the open ports or security issues in the application scan for vulnerabilities etc those are pretty much automated tools uh, but again when you are using it you have to use it uh, responsibly okay where you cannot go on scanning every computer which you find across your lab network or across internet okay because uh, eventually these systems are protected and if some something goes wrong 
then uh, people might take legal action on the pe uh, responsible person, correct? So you have to use carefully and that's where the concept of uh, black hat hacker and white hat hacker comes in picture. So you will come to know about these terms in future. A black hat hacker is somebody who's uh, trying to find out security vulnerabilities across to do damage to the system. White hat hacker is nothing but who will identify after taking a consent or permission from the asset owner. Okay, so somebody who's owning a website or a server, I will first request whether I can do some kind of vulnerability assessment on that system. And then I will report those security issues to that owner instead of reporting those issues into public. And once the owner fixes uh, those uh, security issues, then I have the right to make it public or make it available over my research blog or somewhere where I, I'm writing my documents. Okay. So those, those two are very different areas. And an ethical hacker is somebody who's working in that profession and who's given permission to identify security vulnerabilities into their infrastructure. Okay. Understood about these uh, areas? All good? Yes, sir. Okay, excellent. Now jump into the next level. All right. So the next level is nothing but additional knowledge which you need to have into security only to make your career path into cyber security. All right. So for stuff like firewalls or defense in depth are the core concepts which everybody should be aware of. And then get deeper into the security systems. Like, you know, there is web application firewall, how sandboxing works, how identity and access management works, uh, how privilege access management works. Now, again, these are the concepts which are linked with your systems or applications or your network uh, fundamentals, all right? So the uh, next level related concepts are pretty much linked with your key areas, all right? Application development, um, in my opinion, everybody should uh, who is making their career into cybersecurity should have basic understanding of any application or coding languages, okay? Be it anything, like you can learn C, C++, you can learn Java, you can learn Python, any coding language, but at least some, uh, I mean, the individual need to have one coding language uh, understanding and skill sets and uh, the concepts like, you know, uh, object-oriented programming, etc. So those, those are very crucial to understand application and then find out security loopholes into an application. So that always helps. Secure coding practices. If you are building your career in cybersecurity, many times you come across developers and you have to guide developers to fix security issues. To, uh, to do that, you need to understand how a code is made secure or how uh, security is introduced through code. So those are the advanced levels which you will learn when you start building your career into cyber security and when you start learning about application security also. Cloud concepts, uh, because nowadays most of the applications have migrated or migrated into cloud and uh, most of the companies are also preferring cloud environment rather than having things at uh, their own uh, premise. So cloud service providers, uh, what are their services, how cloud architecture functions, what security controls they have. Those are quite handy concepts which you will learn and you need to learn in future. Governance risk compliance. I gave an example of how governance work. Uh, what are the standards which we can implement to uh, have cybersecurity in place? Uh, so that is a concept of having consulting and auditing as a career option. And uh, that uh, on that I will talk about in my upcoming slide. But here, uh, if anybody is uh, having knowledge of what ISO standard talks about, uh, again, ISO is a recognized standard across uh, the globe. Uh, it is, so uh, I, I think in my previous example, I told you, right? If you are building a security control, it has to be a specific standard or it has to uh, meet some of the expectations. Uh, based on the previous issues which anybody has faced in the controls, correct? So ISO type of standards or any regulatory standards are uh, defined to make everybody aware of what exactly they need to do with any security control. Okay. 
uh, again, to put you put uh, this entire concept into very layman term is like, let's say you are building a wall across your home, the same example. Okay. Now, the person who's expert into building wall, that person would know how to build a wall. Okay. But if somebody says that, okay, the, the government has mentioned that you need to have 10 feet wall to uh, have maximum security. And on top of the wall, you need to have, let's say, barbed wire or maybe something pointing so that nobody is able to cross the wire. So 10 feet is something which is standard defined by, let's say, government or the local security bodies. Okay, Why 10 feet? Because average height of any person within India is somewhere around 5.6 or 5.10 or 6. All right. So that's the reason why 10 feet wall is very difficult to cross. So that is a standard set by the local security uh, authorities or uh, the government. So what the expert who's building the wall will do, he'll try to meet that standard. Okay. So that's the simple term of how compliance and governance work. Okay. So governance says that 10 feet wall and compliance states that the wall has to be, let's say, thick than like you know six inches or maybe eight inches so those are the compliances uh, and standards which we are trying to meet when we are building our control all right and if uh, somebody comes and tries to find out whether you have built appropriate wall around your property uh, whether it is of that height of that width of that depth then that is something called as auditing against a standard Okay, so standard is defined. You have done something. Now I'm checking whether you are meeting that standard or not. And if you are meeting the standard, then I will tell you, okay, you are certified. Your wall is certified that you have met the standard. And this is the uh, audit report. Okay, this is the simplest term uh, for understanding how governance, risk and compliance work. Now talking about the risk concept. We spoke earlier about how the risk is uh, defined of a loophole getting exploited by a threat actor, correct? Now, there are multiple ways to address this risk. So you understand that the gate is open, that's a vulnerability, and somebody coming in, that's a risk. Now, how do you manage this particular risk? Okay, You basically try and understand whether the risk is really possible or not. Okay. If somebody is not around your, take it into other sense. You have built a property where around five kilometers, there is not even a single person available. So keeping the back door open, will it really matter or will it cause a really big risk? Because a land five kilometers empty uh, in radius, you will be easily able to see if somebody is coming in from any direction. Okay. So then the risk may not really matter much. Okay. Then how do you avoid that risk is maybe by having additional security cameras around and identify who's coming from which direction. Then you can avoid that risk. Okay. How do you mitigate that risk is that maybe put a, a magnetic uh, lock on that back door so that it is automatically closed after somebody opens it or maybe have a specific uh, lock which is known to only the people who are residing inside the house. Okay, so that way you mitigate the risk. And how do you accept the risk? Like I said, like you have five kilometers barren land and you have built a property in the center. So you can see uh, in every direction about four, four or five kilometers. Then you basically accept the risk that, you know, it is not a major one. I, I don't mind keeping the door open for maybe few hours or something. Uh, and I'm okay with that. Like I have eyes and ears and I can see if somebody is coming in. So this entire concept is taken as a risk management concept. Okay. Now implement that into any information asset, information system, then that is considered as cybersecurity risk management. So those are the areas where, where people are, you know, uh, building their careers and you need to have at least basic understanding of how risk functions, what uh, the terms, as I mentioned, avoidance, mitigation, acceptance mean. And then you will be able to, uh, you know, 
at least have basic knowledge into cybersecurity world for risk management. Now look into the actual concept or actual areas for which we are having the session. All right. That is a career path which you can choose in cybersecurity. Now, again, the, these career paths which I have mentioned on the slide uh, are not the only career paths. Th those are broader areas which any uh, cybersecurity world will have. But there are new career paths also coming up. There are new designations coming up. So you can always explore. And if you ask me, I really don't want to explore my career path into one specific direction. I generally prefer having knowledge across multiple areas so that whatever one specialization which I may have, I'm excelling into that. So that kind of mindset also matters a lot. So first is testing and assurance, uh, which I talked about, like how do you test any security control which you have implemented, whether that control is really effective, what are the possibilities of somebody breaching into that control, how your assets are compromised, how your information can get leaked, all that is tested and that requires to be tested on frequent manner or at least in a specific periodic manner. Okay, meaning that let's say I've done testing today and I'll not uh, look into that asset for about maybe two, three years, then that may not help because within two, three years, a thief might have uh, developed different skills to, uh, you know, break into something else, correct? There is always evolution into the controls. There is always evolution into techniques of breaches, all right? And why I'm using all these terms is like you might have seen that We've been, I mean, again, taking a very general example, every uh, human being has been trying to avoid any robberies or uh, thieves stealing something or anything like that. But still, till today, uh, even after so many evolutions into the security controls, uh, different security systems, there are still some or the other robberies or any uh, stealth happening across the globe, right? So that is like never ending uh, thing and we have to basically get along with those concepts accept those facts and try and keep everything up to date so testing is very important and with testing you uh, understand uh, what are the loopholes and how do you basically uh, close those loopholes here i just want to give you one uh, example of how uh, things work into defense uh, in in war situation or any situation which are considered uh, as a defense situation. In military concepts or in uh, defense concepts, again, I'm not going into too technical, but just from broader point of view, there is something called as, let's say we want to protect our line, okay? Or maybe we are uh, protecting the fortress, all right? So if we are protecting and there is a defense team, all right, they will put multiple layers of controls. They will put, uh, let's say, fencing around it and then first la layer of control. Then the second layer could be uh, like a, a perimeter set up across maybe five kilometers line. All right. Within that perimeter, they will put, uh, let's say, uh, mines around or uh, tank mines, uh, which are hidden uh, below the ground. Okay, then there is a layer or there is a line of defense where, with soldiers who are placed across, who will protect the entire border and perimeter. Uh, then they will basically try and implement some wall uh, around the fortress. So those are different different layers of security which are controls which are uh, placed across something which they are protecting. Now, there are concepts of blue team and red team, okay? And again, not going into two details, but blue team is essentially who are the control uh, preventers, okay? So, uh, they are basically preventing any attack from happening. They are part of the defense team. And red team is somebody who's not knowledgeable enough about these controls, and they are trying to get inside the entire defense okay so this concept is also taken into cyber security wherein red team is uh, somebody who don't know anything about the information systems and the controls which are uh, implemented in uh, your it infrastructure but they are trying to evade uh, irrespective of that okay so when they are trying to evade they will try and discover multiple techniques identify 
multiple uh, loopholes and then try to exploit those. All right. So that's pretty much any hacker would do. Okay. So this is more like a simulation of any hacking activity within the, that organization. And blue team is somebody who's knowledgeable of these kind of attacks and they'll try to defend the IT infrastructure so that uh, these things are not happening or the attacks are prevented. Okay. So testing and assurance is revolving around that area. The second area is the architecture and engineering, uh, which I spoke about in my previous example. How do you architect uh, the entire uh, security controls? How do you put your application into internet? How do you have infrastructure uh, built uh, in such a way that it is secure and it is scalable and it is protected by security controls, correct? And then implementing those security controls, having those concepts in place is done by security engineers. Advisory and consulting, I spoke about the risk analysis and risk management. Then auditing is another area. So you might have heard about auditors auditing something or they are trying to. So auditing is nothing but let's say you are following all these concepts of testing or following concepts of implementation of security controls. You are following concepts of, you know, implementing uh, the monitoring systems, etc. But how do you identify the effectiveness of those controls okay whether those are really uh, creating an impact on the systems or they are protecting the systems or not right so that's something which is handled in auditing compliance uh, management is against any standard and security management is looking at the broader picture of the entire security posture of your organization and managing that so th that is also another career path which a lot of people go into then security operation is nothing but the monitoring systems which I spoke about, the cameras, the events and everything, alerting mechanism which happens. Those are monitored by somebody. Okay, That is essentially your security operations uh, center. And the career paths within uh, security operations is, let's say if you want to be analyst into a security operations center, uh, if the incidents have already happened, then how do you quickly respond to that incident and try to mitigate that incident? You need to understand what exactly that incident is all about. How do you trace back that incident? How do you find relevant people and close that incident? And then advances like threat hunting type of thing where you are actively finding out all the security uh, threats and try, try to convert them into an incident and then closing those incidents. Lastly, Let's say if the uh, security incident has already happened, the breach has already happened, somebody has already stolen data or uh, done damage to your system, then you do analysis of it and try to find out uh, what went wrong. Okay? So there are multiple areas into it. You do digital forensics, you can have, let's say, malware type of attack. So you do malware analysis. If there are cyber frauds, which are typically in the case of uh, BFSI sector, then there are fraud teams who are investigating those areas or there are compliance specific frauds or anything which has gone into uh, non-compliance and then that is investigated after a breach scenario. So digital forensics is pretty much post breach, I would say. So if something has gone wrong, then the forensics uh, team come in and they uh, try and investigate into uh, the incident or the breach. These are the uh, different career paths that you have just described. But for a person who has just finished graduation and is looking for an entry level role, where do, where do they fit in? Do they fit in in any of these or do they start somewhere? Every area of uh, these career paths have an entry point Okay, to answer that question. But an individual needs to understand what their core interests are Okay, to start off. Like many times I have seen uh, people are having more inclination towards risk assessment and risk analysis. Okay. So they choose that path. A person who's like really good with applications and networks who like those concepts of development and all that, they get into the testing or hacking bit or they like, you know, somebody likes that hacking is quite cool or people recognize and all that. But again, that, that's something every individual's interest. Some of the people who are really good with uh, analyzing things, you know, analyzing something uh, which might have gone wrong or they try and get into that investigation uh, mindset. 
so they fall into security operations or digital forensics type of career path so and if somebody who likes to build something or create something or uh, do engineering then they go into architectural and in engineering uh, field uh, as i said there, there is always an entry point in every career path uh, all of these paths have entry points uh, to an extent maybe architectural and engineering career path may have a bit of advanced knowledge requirements so if somebody who's having freshly graduate he or she may have to uh, get additional skill sets on board uh, to get into that path that's the only thing but otherwise pretty much every uh, thing is possible for at, at an entry level okay great for all these jargons and everything i just thought of bringing this slide to give you a comfort uh, on what exactly needs to be done because i know to digest all that information is going to be a bit difficult uh, although i try to simplify it but i also know deep down that somewhere some confusion may happen so i just thought of putting my 12 points in uh, nutshell that what anybody can do uh, and how they have to approach cybersecurity as a career path. Okay, The first thing which you need to understand, and uh, as I mentioned while answering the question earlier, that you need to find your own area of interest. So while you are studying, you can try and uh, visualize that, okay, do I like coding better or do I like maybe architecture better? Or do I like operations or risk-related matters better. So understand these concepts and try and find out your own interest and don't rush things, okay? You have plenty of time while you are learning. Uh, as you are learning, you are uh, like, you know, you'll find your own comfort. If you ask me about my personal uh, growth, I had my graduation done in uh, computer science and I wanted to learn about programming languages. So I learned Java, advanced Java and uh, PHP and other programming languages during my bachelor's. And I had interest in that. But after bachelor's, then I thought, okay, I learned uh, programming and all that. Now I want to learn maybe network and operating system or databases. When I did, did my master's, I did it in uh, system administration so that I could understand network and uh, systems in better sense. But while I was doing my master's, uh, I was introduced to information security uh, at that time. And that I found as an, uh, as a field of application of both my bachelor's knowledge and my master's knowledge. So that's the reason why I chose cybersecurity as a career path. And within cybersecurity, since I already knew how applications function, the core operating system concepts and everything functions, that means I was pretty much inclined towards my technical side of the things. That's why I chose security assurance, security testing as my career path. And I started as a pen testing role. So it is very important to find out your own interest. If you are not able to find your interest, then you have resources. You can also reach out to me if you require. I will help you to find your interest. There is no problem. And there are multiple resources which will, which will help you to understand uh, what you need to do if you are having a specific interest in your career path. Then make a decision on your skills. So this is another concept to find out your interest. So you know that you have XYZ skills and based on the, those skill set levels, you can make a decision on your career path. And uh, as I explained to you earlier, whenever you are learning something, learn in continuation with a logic so that it is clear in your head and it is very easy to understand and then you can answer anything. So don't only learn based on the questions or uh, what will come in exam or in viva or anything of that sort learn with the logic the concepts should be clear keep yourself updated there are so many things uh, so many resources available nowadays previously uh, i mean only twitter used to be a really good source of information uh, but nowadays you have a lot of uh, material a lot of information available for free over internet utilize it so whenever you are having some free time uh, the way I do things or I have my technique and my mentors have also taught me this, that in a day, not if not possible every day, at least in few days, you keep one or two hours aside where you are just doing ideation. And again, during this time, you're not touching your phone, not touching your Facebook, Instagram or any of that sort, if you have accounts, by the way. But if you don't, that's really great. 
but <clears throat> uh, keep two uh, hours aside and uh, in in together in a week let's say if you are spending about 8 to 10 hours uh, on your ideation and learning something new you will automatically uh, learn uh, really good skills within 6 months or a year's time so it, it is all about you know how you are making your own skill sets up, updated and uh, giving time to your uh, skill development right so develop your uh, creative and analytical mind that that's the bit which i was talking about and as i mentioned about the key areas earlier get all those fundamentals right and clear because trust me it is not going to get forgotten those concepts are used every day even today i'm using those concepts after even 12 years of experience those are uh never ending concepts those are used every day in any it industry practice and maintain hands on if you are testing if you are doing a regular work in cyber security that makes you updated and the skill sets eventually get better and better uh dis discuss and make best use of uh, public forums so there are a lot of public forums uh, available over internet uh, then like the way I generally do is like I know some of the cybersecurity experts. I will go and I'll check what all uh, blogs they read or maybe the people they follow. So I will try and check those blogs. I will follow uh, those people so that I'm uh, developing my knowledge in better sense. And, and uh, you know, if I have questions, I can ask the right people as well. Learn from others. Read security blogs. Uh, never let go old books. I generally don't let go old books. I still have some of the books which are uh, which I had read back in 20, sorry, 2008, 2009. Okay. <clears throat> so I still have those C, C++ black books which uh, are available in APA by one so in Pune. Uh, you get a lot of good books. Uh, try and, uh, you know, develop your knowledge across multiple books rather than keeping you know restricted to only syllabus level books what will happen is you will get to know something more or the way i told that you know broader the spectrum you will understand it better people skills are really important so eventually when you are building your career path you will have to uh, deal with a lot of people talk to a lot of people present at multiple forums so it is important to understand people's skills, interpersonal skills. Those are the core concepts which anybody should have. Like, you know, uh, uh, so I would generally say 60% technical, 40% interpersonal and uh, people's skills are important. And communicating and writing uh, is uh, again important. What, uh, what happens is many times we do excellent work but we are not able to represent it in better sense. We are not able to write it properly or communicate it properly. Then eventually these concepts evolve and you get to learn about it. But it is always better to have those skills developed by yourself. And these are the uh, skills which nobody else can help you to develop. You can go under uh, various trainings and all that. But ultimately it is something which you are supposed to do. So that's something anybody can learn and uh, keep uh, themselves updated on. Okay, so that's about it. Any questions, if anybody has, I can answer. And I know it's a bit of longer session. I didn't anticipate that it will go over one hour, but it was good fun for me as well. It was definitely uh, good. And uh, I would say for me also, there were a lot of concepts that have been uh, uh, clarified uh, in this session. Uh, I had a few questions for you, uh, Shrikant. We've, we've been talking about artificial intelligence, uh, robotics, and all that, uh, you know, in, in the last few years. How is that um, impacting cybersecurity? I'm sure that, you know, there is um, things that are happening at a very uh, fast pace than what you expect. So, What's your thought on um, artificial intelligence and the impact on uh, cyber security? Yeah, so mainly because of artificial intelligence, there uh, have been uh, good uh, traction on automation, I would say, because we, we also try and automate a lot of things. We try to automate it so that we are, you know, uh, getting along with the new trends which are coming up in cyber security. 
at the same time uh, if you look into a different aspect with artificial intelligence and the information what people are providing so that the ai uh, engine is getting developed also has uh, possessed some risks around privacy and other uh, aspects because many times we don't really sanitize the input which we are giving to ai engines and uh, whatever output we are getting that is also uh, you know based on the same input what we are giving right so uh, many times we don't sanitize and we we give out more information than we are supposed to so those, that is the second area the third point is in in my view i generally like to get the concepts by myself and now with ai engines available you are basically having something to rely on correct uh, if I have to give you a, a like very simple example is how many times these days we have done calculations or sum up uh, with on or maybe on our fingertips or within our mind. We generally don't do that anymore. We, we have excels, we have calculators available and we do that. Now, because of that, what happens is like our mind is or automatically uh, trained to rely on some of the other tools. Uh, and it impacts our analytical thinking in a sense. So my view is that, that we are building something and we are automating things, but at the same time, we should not, uh, you know, re remove our concepts or uh, we should be focusing on how we are developing our own skill set. And lastly, the way AI is evolving uh, and why it is creating some of the other issues in cybersecurity is because most of the times things are created uh, with within few of the uh, things like, you know, if I give you a real example, if I give my picture to AI and tell AI that, you know, uh, give me a picture where I'm presenting to somebody or having a seminar it will give you four or five different pictures with me in that picture and presenting to audience and they look literally real, all right? So that is also creating a problem in investigation and what exactly is the fraud, what is not a fraud, uh, whether there is a morphed image or not morphed image, correct? And where do you draw the line to not to compromise your privacy? So again, the privacy bit is pretty uh, impacted with that. But yeah, I mean, eventually, uh, cybersecurity is not something which is a blocker for any technology. So cybersecurity is developed around technologies. So we'll have to, and there, there are a few of the standards which are in development uh, for generative AI and other types of AI. And eventually we will get to a standardization and hardening of those AI uh, engines. Okay, so basically to summarize, it would be like uh, somebody who is in a cybersecurity role needs to keep themselves updated, which is exactly what you said in your previous slides as well, to ensure that you know they are well aware of the um, happenings in each of these different technologies and how it's going to impact what they are doing for an organization or wherever they are working. Yes, yes, definitely. So that, can we say that- That's the core of entire IT, right? I mean, that's the core of entire IT. In IT yeah. You have to be updated all the time, yeah. Correct. So is it uh, Metaverse also on the similar lines? Because now you see even children are playing on the Metaverse. Roblox is becoming uh, the talk of the town. And uh, cybersecurity aspect is is very uh, prominent even for, uh, you know, children to be aware of it. Uh, yes. yeah, as, as part of parents being, you know, giving that education to uh, the children also. So do, do you suggest any things out there in terms of uh, the tips and tricks? Yeah, so generally, um, my the bottom line which I generally look at is don't give away unnecessary information. That's one. The other bit is your your own privacy and your children' privacy is in your hands. The more you expose them to these things, the more you are having a threat to compromise. Okay, uh, and <clears throat> obviously, metaverse and these kind of uh, concepts are uh mentioned to be secure but those have not been tested so far i believe because those are not made aware or available to the entire world so far so we are not really sure about uh, how secure those technologies are and 
any any system you i mean if you ask any cyber security expert as well they will say that none of the systems are 100% secure it is not possible correct so if, if there are even like 99% secure but 1% is not secure and that's the 1% which any hacker would target okay so the thing is like from tips and tricks point of view uh, i generally ask people to be vigilant be aware uh, what information you are giving out uh, what consents you are signing for many times they give you terms and conditions and consent signing you just tick in the box and you go agree to all and everything but what you are signing for is very important and if and uh, from privacy point of view, if I have to tell somebody that go to Facebook or uh, Meta's privacy and read that document properly, like whenever you have time, like, you know, one or two hours, read that document, you will understand where all your data flows. Okay. And that will give you an idea what to do, what not to do. That, that will open your eyes for sure. I'm pretty sure of that. And... Mm. Uh, yeah, and, and uh, these are the things which are uh, basically benefiting the companies who are developing all these tools. Obviously, they have their business models right around it. You have to be vigilant on that part. And especially uh, nowadays, there are a lot of uh, issues which are happening on cyberbullying uh, for children who are online. Uh, there are some of the things which are, uh, you know, social engineering activities which are happening with kids who are online. So those those areas um, you have to be aware of, and uh, I mean me being parent, I'm also pretty uh, aware uh, on that part because sometimes even the schools ask, you know, do you want to share pictures of your uh, kids on social media or something, which I generally don't agree with, uh, because you don't know. Like after ten years, fifteen years, they will say that why did you compromise my privacy? <laughs> they might come back to me, right? So. That, those are the things which I would suggest. Yeah, to. true, very true. Uh, you spoke about uh, controls in one of your slides, you know, where uh, you need to implement the controls. And you also spoke about BFSI. So uh, just for everybody's, um, you know, knowledge, BFI, BFSI is banking and financial systems. So uh, uh, Shrikant, the question to you is that does every industry have its own controls you also spoke about standards right so does the standard define that if the industry is this then these are the set of controls if this is the industry then this is the set of control yes uh, every industry will have uh, certain regulatories certain uh, standards and uh, certain things to be followed uh, to give you an example for, from india uh, bfsi sector point of view rbi mandated some of the controls for every bank to follow Correct. So RBI is a regulatory uh, authority within India for managing the banking things. Okay, But within that, uh, the banks handle many payment card information. That is essentially your credit cards, debit cards, and information related to any plastic money. Correct. So for that, there is worldwide governing body called PCI Council. Okay, That is Payment Card Industry Council. They have certain controls when they are talking about payment card information. They only govern the payment card information. RBI governs the banking uh, practices and banking operations entirely. Similarly, there is IRDA, okay, who are responsible, who are the authorities for regulating uh, the uh, security and other operational concepts of in, uh, insurance sector, correct? For insurance sector, <laughs> they are the governing authority and they have mandated some of the set of controls, uh, standards, like for example, standards could be <clears throat> uh, your operating systems must, must be hardened and they have to be hardened as per CIS benchmark. So CIS is computer industry standards which are uh, accepted across the globe. So those ha hardening parameters have to be aligned with CIS benchmarks. Those are bare min minimum benchmarks which any OS has to ha be uh, having. So let's say IRDA talks about that. Uh, IRDA says that you have to do annual pen testing of your uh, systems which are handling insurer's data, correct? So th that is something which they uh, mandate. And if we are uh, we have to meet that standard, then we have to conduct annual pen testing on those systems, correct? <laughs> so uh, 
to keep it short like every industry has their own uh, governing authorities regulatory authorities and uh, subsequently they uh, make sure that there are standards which are followed and uh, like even telecom industry has try in india uh, out here is uh, tra uh, <clears throat> so those are the authorities which ensure that uh, whoever is falling into that particular industry as are uh, protecting the information and again uh, there are not only the standards they also have fines uh, related to that so regulators come with fine right if you are not following uh, specific things or some breach happens then there are fines around it so every customer information leakage also uh, has fine then massive data breach also has fine so a lot of uh, different fines are also there based on the regulators great so uh, shrikant thank you very much for uh, joining us and giving us a um, uh, view of the careers that are there as well as you know uh, enlightening us on the uh, different options that are available uh, I'm, I'm i really appreciate that you've taken out time on a weekend to come and talk to us uh, thank you very much for that yeah a pleasure is mine thank you for having me and uh, one thing which i want to uh, say is that it's not something which i've uh, like you know taken out time on the weekend because within cyber security the community is so small that we have a concept called giving back to the community so whatever i have learned i have experienced i'm always happy to share that and uh, i have given my uh, twitter and linkedin uh, handles uh, I will also share my slides uh, with you. And if anybody has any question, please, please feel free to reach out to me. I'll be happy to answer those questions. Okay. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much.